It's good to have a pet again, honestly. So polymorphing pets has a couple of oddities in Evil Hack. They're not bugs. That's not the right word. They're just strangeness. It's like how murder in vanilla, it's like you can polymorph a shopkeeper and then kill him, and it's not murder. It's not a bug. That's intended behavior, but it's not necessarily what you'd expect. And arguably, it's only intended because it would be too annoying to code it differently. <laughs> um, so, there are certain pets, it, it, there are certain cases where you can't have a pet of a certain race. Um, most of those are when you're wearing or wielding a bane, like Dragon Bane, for instance. You can't make friends with something that that artifact hates. Um, or if you do have a pet, like Hayes was, that um, of a form the artifact hates, then they'll untame immediately. Um, this happens, like, it checks every move that you make, whether you're wearing or wielding a bane, and whether there are any monsters on the floor that would become hostile to, because of it. Um, and it makes that happen. So, if you, pol if, for instance, I were to polymorph my cat into a dragon right now, she'd imme immediately turn hostile. On the other hand, Okay, no leash here. Wasn't sure. Um, on the other hand, knights also can have difficulty making friends. Um, so they can't tame dragons because they're like natural enemies is the rationale. And gameplay-wise, it might be that like since dragons are so um, powerful, so much more powerful than evil lack, they don't want to give knights easy access to such good steeds since they obviously benefit more than other roles. Um, also, so knights can be either lawful or chaotic um, in Evil Hack. I mean, I suppose they can in vanilla with opposite alignment, but in Evil Hack, elves and orcs can be knights and they start out as chaotic. Oops, I forgot my cat. Um, there's a new monster called the Eldritch Kirin, which is like a Kirin except evil. That's literally it. Um, and, and it appears in Ganon, which kind of matters. Um, but lawful knights can't tame Eldritch Kirin, and chaotic knights can't tame lawful Kirin. Um, so those are, and then furthermore, there's some monsters that no one can tame. Um, Obviously, like uniques and stuff. Um, some like really rare and dangerous monsters. The two relevant to this particular conversation are um, elder minotaurs and elhorns. They can't be tamed. Um, however, so the night dragon interaction and the uh, and the night Kirin interaction, as well as the elhorn and elder minotaur business. It's not that they will become hostile to you. It's just you can't tame them with like a scroll tame monster or whatever. So if you happen to get one via a polymorph trap, they'll stay a pet, um, which is nice because they're great pets. Um, I got an elder pet to a minotaur once, and it was pretty awesome. Um, they don't have much magic resistance, so eventually they'll probably die. Mine got polymorphed into a wolf and just totally wrecked. Couldn't even, you know, turn undead, uh, turn undead her back into a useful creature because she was just a wolf at that point. Um, and they're animals, so they won't, like, wear amulets or anything. So that's annoying. But they just have absolutely stunning attacks. Um, so I'm going to go up and face that wizard in a sec. Rather not be hungry while it happens though. Um, is it a wizard? Yeah, okay. Um, so wizards have spellcasting attacks plus like wizard starting attack starting kit which can include useful 
wands and stuff. Oops. So there's something to be wary of. I'm hoping I can poison insta kill. I cannot. Um, they have a wand of polymorph, which is why I'm feeling momentarily different. I have magic resistance. So my main concern is just killing this dude before it wastes, he wastes um, all the charges and all these potions, which are like kind of useful, or it could be turned into water, which is also useful. Um, so I can wait around, but he might keep throwing stuff at me or zapping at me and waste more resources. So I'm actually going to take a step forward. And he started wrecking my armor, which is pretty typical of wizards, honestly. Um, I'm picking up my daggers first, but hopefully the teleport stayed on the same level. Um, so I can chase him down. Okay, it did. Um, also quite promising that it wasn't a wand of teleport, because then I'd never catch him. Kill him before he casts too many more spells. Yeah, okay. Um, this can be Cloak of Magic Resistance. It would be super useful, except I already have the PYEC, so I totally don't care about it. Um, we know this is Polymorph the Wand. Uh, anything useful in here? Scroll of Scare Monster, incredible. I've been wanting those for a while. Um, I'd say wizards are one of the toughest player monsters in the sense that they'll wreck your gear instead of just wrecking you. So even if they don't necessarily pose a threat to your life, they do propose a lasting threat. Um, but they always have good loot because they, you know, get normal wizard things. Uh, I'm taking this oil skin bag with me because, like, on the off chance this one gets cursed, or my main one gets cursed, I'd like to have a second one at least available as a spare. Although I doubt I'll carry it around with me all the time. I'm gonna eat this dude because he's not a habit. I hate hallucinating when I have warning because it always makes me think there's dangerous enemies around. And, like, if I see the enemy, then I, like, remember that I'm hallucinating because it's, like, something ridiculous. But if I just see a warning number, then it's harder to remember that I'm hallucinating. <laughs> um, and so then I freak out. Okay, let's see if we can get any good sacrifice -y stuff. Probably not. Which is fine. Ooh! Alright, valorously means it's not an artifact, which also means... I have no idea what it is. Um, cool hack, though. Well, so there's two cool hacks. One is I just pick everything up and see what's blessed, because the, um, the gift is going to be blessed. Of course, if there's multiple blessed things... Well, the maces were from the angels, so... Um, I, like, got two alley axes last time when I was creating monsters here. So I know it's not the maces. Um, which means it has to be the high boots, because that was the only other blessed thing. Um, but if you don't want to bother with that, or if that doesn't help you identify the thing because there's too many blessed stuff, there's too much blessed stuff or whatever, another cool hack is joining the IRC channel. You should totally do that. Um, because... There's a bot that announces when people get sacrifice gifts. So you can go on it and see what you were gifted. Is it kind of lame to do that? 
Arguably so, yes. Um, it also announces when you get the luck stone, luck stone from Mind's End, which I find super annoying. Because, in theory, you could pick up the luck stone and maybe it's... Um, maybe it's a touchstone or something. And you, I, I would personally would like to test it myself in-game to find out. And it's not like it's hard. You just need to rub it against an iron item. But I'd still like to do it. And meanwhile, Hecubus, the bot, just comes in and ruins all my fun. Ruins all the suspense. Um, anyway, um, high boots, not, not necessary. I have jumping boots. Those are perfectly fine, thank you. Um, one nice thing about god gifts is that they're fixed and enchanted, I think, plus three to plus five. Um, so they're always pretty decent. But I prefer magical boots to well-enchanted... Um, mundane ones. Yeah, so I don't know if I've really mentioned or explained how the artifact or how gifting works in Evil Hack. Um, instead of just being able to get artifact gifts, you also have a chance of getting mundane items. Um, and there are like rough guidelines in place so that like casters tend to get spell books are more likely to get spell books and they don't get heavy armor, um, stuff like that. Um, no characters ever get things that they can't wear, um, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, they can still be pretty random. Uh, anyway, I think it's, um, and so basically whenever you have a Whenever you have a chance of getting a gift, or like whenever, so you ha whenever you sacrifice, you have a chance of getting a gift, just like in vanilla. Um, and whenever that chance like triggers, um, there's a chance you'll get an artifact, and there's a chance you'll get a normal item. Um, and the chance you'll get an artifact increases with your experience level. Um, it's like a kind of square rooty sort of thing. Or a square sort of thing, rather. Um, so it kind of increases pretty quickly at the later experience levels. Um, and at level 30, you're guaranteed artifacts. Unless there are no artifacts left, in which case you just get a normal... I think you always get a weapon in that case, which I find odd. Is that right? You might get gloves sometimes, if you could be gifted Dragon Bane. Uh... No, I don't think that's true. I think you always get a weapon. But it's a nice weapon. <laughs> um, and something that you're skilled in. So it can be useful. Um, like, there's a good chance it'll have an object property and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so at low levels, you often get mundane items. I was actually really lucky to get two artifacts with my first two sacrifices. Um... The first two skill, uh, two experience levels, you always get mundane items. Um, I think this might mimic vanilla, where you can't get a artifact gift when you're at level one or two. So it's the same in Evil Hack. If you have a guaranteed first gift, like um, Valkyries and the Only or whatever, then you always get that before mundane gifts, as long as you're at least level three. Okay, so this is uncursed scroll I looted from a bag. I didn't pick it off off the ground. So it's safe to use once while uncursed. And I'm going to do that because I don't really have many potions of holy water to waste on a single scroll. Um, yeah. Plus it'll make it stack with any scrolls I do pick up off the ground. Um... I'll keep the One Ring around for thematic effect, even though it kind of annoys me to have something with a name. Um, I mean, I can always just unname it. It's not like it's a special item or anything. I'm pretty sure, anyway. Um, like, it doesn't have any special abilities. Um, but I won't.
So my emergency bag finally has some useful stuff in it. Um, specifically a scroll of scare monster and the scroll of remove curse, but that's not like super important really. I'm not really facing spellcasting monsters yet. Um, I have quite a collection of wands, arguably too many. I normally wouldn't bring a wand to probing around, but since I can steal stuff, it's like arguably useful to know what people are carrying at least sometimes. Um, so the last thing I'm going to do before uh, before going on the quests is see if I can forge anything. So how I'm, I'm going to do that, I'm going to read a scroll of magic detection. I'm going to sense the presence of magic. There's something here and there's something here. Oh, it just tells me which one is there. So it's sort of telepathy. Telepathy is not useless, except for the fact that I already have the PYEC. Plus, orc so orc, um, orcish swords aren't. I think you could make an orcish longsword. Um, but nothing really. You can't make any actually good weapons with an orcish short sword. Um, lightning is an incredible brand because a lot of things aren't resistant to shock. But it's on a staff, which is wooden. Um, so it's essentially useless. You'll note that, so blessed magic detection identifies the object property on magical items. It does not identify their BUC status or enchantment or... Um, rust proofing status or even like in the case of the quarter staff it's still just being called a staff for me the actual specific formal type has not been revealed same with the crude short sword instead of work short sword so the only thing it reveals is the magical properties um, which is plenty for my purposes but something to keep an eye out for i suppose Um, yeah. Actually, I'm just going to check real quick to make sure a quarter step. Oh, no, it was part of. It was a wood golem drop, drop so it's definitely made of wood. I was considering checking to make sure that that's what the base type was. Like, I was 99.9% .9 sure, but would have felt silly if I could forge it into something useful somehow. Um. Huh. Huh. I'm pretty certain it identifies magical stuff in containers. Which brings me to two mysteries. Really just one mystery. The thing that's not really a mystery is why is none of my stuff magic? And the answer is why should it be? Um... Although it is somewhat odd to me that none of it has magical properties. Uh, the real mystery is why this blessed curved sword is not does not have the venom brand. Because it came from the Rat King, and I could have sworn he gets the sword with a, a scimitar with a venom brand. Huh. Maybe it's only a chance. Oh, and this didn't get ID'd either. And my scrolls didn't get ID'd. Shit. I guess it doesn't identify things in... chests? That sucks. I'm gonna have to tip out all my shit on the ground. I think I am. This really sucks. Okay, um... I'm gonna put all my stuff in my oilskin bag. Not in my bag of holding, because I don't want to somehow screw up. <sighs> then I'm going to take out my scrolls of magic detection. I do have some uncursed ones. I'm going to bless them real quick with my, again, one potion of holy water. I'm really going through them. It's not like I'm going through them particularly fast, but I'm just doing it so, so inefficiently. It really... 
greets. Um, I'm going to tip the chest on the ground. So, yeah, all that crap's there. I'm going to read another scroll of magic detection. Okay, it's identified the scrolls this time. Wow, I could have sworn it identified stuff in containers. That's super annoying. And now I just have to shovel everything back in. Um, oh, and you'll note I do have magical stuff. Awesome. That's super awesome. Dagger of Lightning, amazing. Daggers of Frost is great, although it does put me in the um, position of having to decide whether to keep them as daggers or um, forge it into swords of some kind. But that's a, that's a good dilemma to have. Um, Excellence is another brand. It um, affects your charisma. So on armor, it uh, on armor it changes your charisma by the enchantment of the armor. So positively enchanted armor is good. Negatively enchanted is bad. Um, oh, I'm gonna, whatever. Um, you know, what, I'm just gonna auto select everything, and it'll put my oil skin back in, and I'll just take it out later. Uh, on a weapon, it depends on the BUC status of the weapon. So, a blessed weapon puts your charisma at 25. Uncursed puts it at like 10 or 12 or something. Um, and cursed puts it at six. So, as in vanilla, charisma is often not terribly helpful, but because it affects your chances of success with conflict, um, it's not like a total nothing burger of a brand. I'm not going to use it, but you might like put it on a shirt if you have nothing better. Um, I prefer drain resistance because I don't have another simple way of getting it. Um, I'm not lawful, so no Excalibur, and I'm not chaotic, so no Stormbringer. I guess I could get the Staff of Asclepius. It confers drain resistance, right? But what would I do with that? I'm a rogue. And I'd have to wish for it which is not happening. Um, I'm like low-key annoyed about the whole container thing. Um, and I've, I've done this on other with other characters too. So it's quite possible I've missed magical items, which is pretty annoying as well. Um, but it just, it seems inconvenient. <laughs> How dare this game inconvenience me? <laughs> um, okay, everything's back in the bag, in the chest. Take out my oil skin bag. Take everything out of my oil skin bag except scrolls. Check over things to make sure they've remained in their same slots. They have, except, except Sting is gone. Where did Sting go? Oh, I think I put it in a ch the chest a while back when I was putting random weapons in. Um, and then, real quick, I'm just going to pop out to face this gargoyle. Because on the very, very slim chance it has a wand of polymorph. I do not want it zapping it at the chest. Okay. So, magical items. Um, we have bone darts of fire, which don't matter. We have silver daggers, which are not magical, and in fact likely negatively enchanted because they were cursed at one point. But they're silver, which is awesome. We've got daggers of frost, which are great. We've got a dagger of lightning, which is also great. 
Um, we've got telepathy, which is whatever. We've got a scimitar of venom. Venom is a neat. Um, oh, and a knife of lightning is also similarly pretty awesome. So venom's a, a reasonably good brand. And in fact, I'm totally using that instead of my katana. Um, I don't... I, I could craft a saber with the scimitar, but I'm not using sabers, so that's of limited usefulness. Excellence I don't care about. I think my charisma is better than it would be with an uncursed weapon of charisma anyway. Oh, an uncursed weapon of excellence anyway. Uh, water walking boots are formally identified now. That's convenient. Um, new scrolls. I think Stinking Cloud is new. Uh, Potion-wise, I'm sure I identified a few. Maybe Levitation is new? I think so. Mm, speed is new. Ring-wise, Searching might be new, might not be. Polymorph might be new too, actually. Curse, I don't want it right now. Wands, I think they were all ID'd like already, yeah. And tools, I don't think I have any magical tools, yeah. So, that was a really good haul on magical weapons, actually. I have, like, everything I could possibly want, and more. Um, the question is what to forge, or if indeed to forge anything at this time. At some point, I'll want a silver katana of frost, hands down. Possibly a silver katana of lightning as well, because why not, you know? Currently, Vorpal Blade plus Longsword of Venom is a really solid choice, I feel like. Especially in the quest where uh, monsters aren't really poison resistant. And for now, I'd like to keep my daggers of frost as daggers, I think, so I can use them. Yeah, actually, I'm not going to forge anything right now. Because um, I wouldn't use it, so why? Why bother? Uh, cool. Um, I have, like, so many weapons now. Too many to keep track of. Uh, my normal daggers, my special daggers of frost, my poison daggers. Don't need, don't need my warhammer if I'm not going to forge at the moment. Okay, um, so now we're getting ready to go off for the quest. What do we need for that? Oh, we need to polymorph my pet first. Right. Um, quick run through of stuff here though. Don't need any magical armor of any particular kind. Actually, I'm just gonna... No, I don't need this, because I have Dragon Bane. I was gonna say I'll take that for acid resistance, because why not? But I have acid resistance at the moment, so... Scrolls... I suppose a scroll of Earth would go totally amiss. Might as well bring Stinking Cloud, because if I don't use it now, when will I? I could use it against the Black Dragon, maybe, actually. That's a thought. Um, potions. I'll just take all my ho po healing, blessed healing potions, because why not? Um, and sleeping as well. There was paralysis. No, I just have the one potion. It's a shame. Um, uh, I really wish I had cursed invisibility. Oh well. Rings, I have everything I want. Wands, same deal. Oh, speed monster. I should speed up my cat. Yep. Um, 
And do I have a wand dependent undead turning on me? I do. If my cat's gonna turn into something good, and hopefully it will, then I wanna be able to revive it if necessary. And oh, and I have an extra bag of oil skin on me, which I don't currently need. Okay, so is that important to do that before she turns into something with lots of magic resistance? Um, arguably, I should spend a whole bunch of time feeding her corpses to give her resistances. Because um, if she polymorphs into something in Eddie or Herbivorous, it's much harder and or impossible to do such a thing. But I don't care. I don't know if I'll keep her around for any, ever anyway. Um, why not is that to, you, so you can give pets telepathy by feeding them shamans or floating eyes. Possibly a couple other monsters. I don't remember off the top of my head. Elven wizards maybe? Um, and that's super useful because then you know where they are at all times. But only meaty monsters provide telepathy. So if you want a pet with telepathy, you either need it to be carnivorous or you need to polymorph for carnivorous polymorph a carnivorous pet with telepathy. All the mindless creatures are coming to play. Huh. Freezing spheres appear not to be poison resistant. Odd. Now Feshni, that's that's pretty decent, actually. Don't have a weapon attack, but... Huh. Speed 9, decent magic resistance. I'm going to see how it fares against random monsters on this level. This is underwhelming. <laughs> um, its me melee attacks are kind of crappy, actually. Okay, stunning. That's better. Um, I think it can wield armor. That's something. Maybe even amulets? Don't know about that. Um, the healing spell is certainly useful. I currently don't have a healing spell. So it's nice that my pet can take care of itself. Um, I don't know. I really prefer something with a bit more stopping power. Although stunning does make it easier to steal from things. Hmm. I'm gonna try to give it some armor just to see if it takes it. I'm pretty sure. Wait, let's just look it up. No fashioning. Oh, it's large. Does that mean it can wear armor? I think it might not be able to. Giants can't, but they're huge. I don't know if that makes the difference or not. So if you hashtag loot a pet, and you say you don't want to take anything from them, you can give them something instead. Very useful. Let's see if they take any of these things. So they wear the shield. They're not interested in the cloaks. Okay. So they'll probably take boots and helms and gloves, too. Um, huh. I 
Another consideration is that their you know, flesh needs are a bit slow. They're nine speed. Mm. I think I'm gonna aim for something better actually. Maybe greedy of me, I know. She does have an MR of 65, so this could be quite difficult. Succubus, so I'm not worried. It'll try to claw me and I'll just stab it a lot. Or maybe my Nalfeshni will take care of it. Nope. Yeah, it, it did all these attacks and it's done like 4 damage. 8 damage, whatever. 4 damage per turn is my point. Just pretty lame. I don't know, the stunning is cool and maybe I should play with that, but it's just so lame. And frankly, I'm only using theft against like really dangerous, largely unique enemies anyway. At which point I'd rather just hit him with a paralysis potion if it matters so much, you know? On the other hand, it seems unlikely that I'm going to hold down A. Horrible practice, I know. Whoa, it actually killed an enemy? Shocking. Okay, don't want the... Oh! There we go, jumping spider. Um, I'm going to kick the shield out of the way so I don't forget that there's a polymorph trap there. That would be embarrassing. Oh, um, I'm not currently fast. So I'll eat this. What's a giant spider's armor? It's not high, is it? Oops, not giant. No magic resistance. I guess it's just avoiding the trap or something. Come on. I much prefer traps that are against a wall because it's much more likely that. What is this? An Etten. So they have a weapon attack. Which isn't nothing. She's neutral. Orchrist is chaotic, I believe. Huh, it doesn't get listed as an artifact. That's interesting. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure Orchrist is chaotic. Because it's Elven. So I don't have any neat artifact weapons to give it. I don't honestly have many good normal weapons to give it. Like, my long sort of venom is good, but I'm using it. Thank you very much. Ooh, a pseudo dragon. Also a decent enemy. Um, doesn't get very high level, but it can put you to sleep. Put enemies to sleep. I think it's probably not good enough for this point in the game, though. Um, wizards start out with a pseudo dragon, and it's a very nice pet to have. Um, ugh. Amphibious monsters, they're such a pain to get polymorphed again. Stop freaking out! Damn it! Where's the next polymorph trap? Frick! It's all the way back in mine town. Should have stuck with an Alfeshni. No, it was a pretty shitty pet, actually. There's a surprising dearth of good undead and demons uh, monster forms. Um, 
So I've mentioned before that Orcus has a mace that drains health. And uh, one prime way to avoid this is to polymorph into some sort of undead creature. Or rather, polymorph into an undead or demonic creature. Um, something with drain resistance. Uh, or, sorry, something with death magic resistance. Drain res resistance won't save you. Um, and there's like very few good options, honestly. I tend to go with Alhoan, which is the Mind Flayer Lich thingy. It has a high level, which means you get reasonably good HP, but it's only like a hundred, um, which compared to an endgame character isn't much. And also they don't two weapon. And they cast spells, which can be useful, but if you're a spell casting character, then it just wastes power. Um, so yeah, there's that. You could go with like, I've never tried it, you could maybe go with a Revenant because they have a paralysis attack. They tend to get around 50 HP though, which is even less. And yeah, both they and Alhoans are only speed nine, which is pretty lame. One thing that I've never tried, I, so until recently it didn't occur to me that uh, demons are also death magic resistant. Um, a Balrog would probably be a decent polyform to take Orcus on with, because you could two weapon with them, and they're speed 12, which is again not great, but it's like one of the faster options out there. Um, So yeah, I don't know. I'm hoping to steal Orcus's weapon just for, you know, the fun of it. When else am I going to have a chance to do it, you know? Who knows if I'm going to have a chance to do it this round, right? I haven't gotten that far yet, for sure. Um, and you can't steal while polymorphed. So it's kind of a moot point for this particular game. But if and when I face um, if and when I face Orcus as another role, I will probably try a ball round just to see how that works out. Um, so I would explain more about the exact mechan- oh, why did I go over here? The downstairs is over there. I'd explain more about the exact mechanics of my weapon of venom, except I don't actually remember what they are. Um, it largely acts like a permanently poisoned weapon in a sense, in that it has a 10% chance of insta-kill, like a normal poisoned weapon. Um, it, uh, and it does extra damage against non-poison resistant enemies, of course. I believe the actual amount of damage might be different. No, that's not true. I think it does like normal plus 1d6 damage like a venomous, like a poisoned weapon does. And then it also does an additional 1d2 damage, which is pretty lame, but considering you have the instacle chance and the normal poisoned weapon damage, it's actually quite generous, I think. Um... So Fire, Frost, and Shock, they all do 5 plus 1d3 extra damage of that element. Which is... Or 3 plus 1d5? Might be that. Anyway, it's a decent bonus. No, I think it's 5 plus something. That sounds right to me. Anyway. Um, it's more than Venom is the point. But you don't get the integral chance. Okay, don't fail me right now, Mine Town Polytrap. Speaking of revenants, so actually let's look them up. You can see their speed 9, and they have a touch paralyze attack. Hmm. 
and a weapon attack actually, which is pretty great. 67, and it's fast too. This is really tempting actually. Oh yes, so you might have noticed I totally ignored like vampire lords or kings or whatever as good undead polyforms. That's because they don't have weapon attacks in the evil hack. It's all claws and bites. So they actually do shit damage. And they're vulnerable to fire, which means that they take a lot of damage and get them. Not a good choice. Even as pets, I personally don't find them helpful. Although some people do. Well, okay. Is this a peaceful unicorn? No. If it was, I might have tried to save it, because I could maybe use the luck. But it's not, so I'm going to try to kill it. Oh. Shit, this is a giant mummy, so it can drain maximum hit points. I actually don't remember off the top of my head what my maximum HP is. So I have no idea if it's already drained a point or not. Spear. Must have picked it up from the centaur. Am I still carrying around that hobbit zombie? Damn, yeah, yeah. Oh, the centaur is not totally eaten yet. Okay. Um, the revenant might be able to kill shopkeepers, but it's not like a guaranteed chance. Come on, show me what you got, revenant. I should really, I should give the Revenant some decent stuff. They are, here's their medium size, so actually they might be able to be kitted out with full equipment. Oops. Revenant's currently not wielding anything. I don't want it to have a key. That is too much power for a pet to have. Let's just make sure these aren't cursed. Oh, and walking shoes too. I'm not, I guess pets wouldn't wield cursed stuff anyway. But still, it's the principle. Yeah. Crude short sword, walking shoes, and you know. I'm keeping the short sword for myself in case it happens to be magical. Selfish, I know. Oh, what? Dude, those are perfectly decent things. Wow. Oh. 2D weapon physical. Normally it would keep the weapon. Oh, and of course it takes the key. What a menace. We can always take it later. Dude, just wield the frickin' sword. It's awesome. It looks all badass and rugged. Oh, and it drops the key too. Maybe they're too stupid to wield weapons? That's actually a possibility. Like, you know how mummy wrap- so mummies often spawn with mummy wrappings. Mummy, mummy wrappings. And there's a decent chance they'll wear them but they can't actually put on armor. It's just they'll spawn wearing them sometimes. It might be the revenants are the same with their weapons. Wow, that's disappointing. You can still wield a weapon as one if you poly into one though. So, don't discount it as a poly form. Apparently they make for terrible pets though. Mountain dwarf, please don't jump. Frick, I hate intelligent 
but weak pets because they jump into poly traps and destroy them. Um, Black Naga Hatchling is not not on. I need I need more. I need better. They're just slow too. I mean, Acid Spit isn't horrible, I guess. And it can blind you, which again is not not unhelpful for a rogue, for sure. Oh, is this the Flesh Golem again? Yeah. Let's see if I can get my pet to kill it. No? Oh, I'm so tempted to just kill it myself. It would give my pet so many resistances if it ate it. Of course, sometimes pets aren't hungry. Fine, I won't kill it. Maybe it'll poly into something good. LOL, no. Fuck! There go all my poly traps. I mean, Seer Dragons aren't horrible, but not really what I'm going for. Plus, this is only an Elder one with shit HP, so... I've probably wasted all my clairvoyance turns. Ugh. And I've forgotten to unannotate this level. And probably the one below it. Yes, that's true. Um, hopefully I'll find more polytrap somewhere. After I finish my quest, maybe I'll just zap a poly wand at one of my pets. Don't want to risk killing it right now. Actually, does killing a pet give an alignment pen? Yeah, it does. It's like negative 15. Sometimes it's hard to remember. Mm, don't care about anything in line town. On to the quest. After we dump all the crap we've accumulated in our stash, that is. Oh shit, cockatrice. Um, saw an acid ball corpse back here. Might as well sacrifice that real quick. Don't even have to worry about it getting old. Andy. Yeah, nothing to be expected. So yeah, they have like a sleeping poison sting, which can both insta-kill non-poison resistant enemies or put them to sleep. So again, it's it's a decent pet, don't get me wrong. It's just not, not necessarily great for a level 14 character. Oops. Rare jackals are pretty difficult, I think. Oh no, only difficulty four. And that would still be enough to increase luck, I think. So this value of a sacrifice is difficulty plus one, if I recall correctly. And the luck given is um five twenty fourths of the sacrifice value. Which is very slightly over one fifth. Which means difficulty for enemies and above give luck if you're not at max luck already, obviously. So I must be at max luck. QED. Mm. Dang, now I'm grumpy. I have nothing to be grumpy about, really. Magical weapons, protection from shape changers, just generally good stuff. I should be happy on a quest like this, but now my mood is all killed. Blah. At least see if my pseudo dragon can kill some enemies and grow up a bit. Uh, 
I always forget the Nagar Intelligent. Which is why it jumped in the poly trap. They're huge, so it's not like they can wear much armor anyway. And they don't have a weapon attack. So I don't feel too bad about not giving it a shot. I just wanted a badass dragon, is that too much to ask for? Oh, I should have unwielded Dragon Bane before using a Polytrap. That was really stupid. I was even planning on it, and then I just forgot. Um, let's go away this Shocking Sphere before it can hurt my pet. Still wearing non-metallic gloves, so not worried about my rings. It's probably too much to hope for for my pseudo dragon to kill the centaur and clean up the monster clean up the level of peaceful peaceful monsters a bit. Oh it is attacking it. Huh. Um Yeah I mean high level pseudo dragons can attack even shopkeepers and priests. Um, and since they are the poison attack that can even be deadly so which, I mean, it can be helpful if you want them dead, and it can be really annoying if you don't want them dead. Um, one time it killed the Mind Town Priest, which I was really pissed about. It was Coaline too, I think. When I was playing a wizard and had a pet early on. Um, <laughs> I want most of this stuff. I want most of this stuff. Yeah. Okay, um, is there anything we want to take out? I know I've done this check before. But I'm doing it again, goddammit. Um, oh, I have a bunch of confusion potions now. I can turn those into water and hallucination. Okay, I've got plenty of holy water options now. That's cool. Yep, okay. I think dra oh, pseudo dragons might be saddleable too, and they fly. So they aren't horrible steeds. I don't think they're very fast. Oh, they're super fast. Okay, never mind. Pseudo dragons are pretty cool. Uh, regardless, not super useful at the moment. Oh, and now that I have a pet pseudo dragon on the floor, it might take out the other peaceful pets or prospective pets around. That's annoying. Priest. There you go. Oh, I need more food. I'm down to one food ration actually, and hungry again. Centaur's dead. Eh. Managed to eat it before it spoiled. Even I was lucky. Fun fact about glass piercers, if you're wearing a glass helmet and they drop on you, it'll shatter your helmet. I think that's kind of funny. Doesn't happen with iron piercers, luckily. That would be kind of overpowered. I mean, they're supposed to be less threatening than glass piercers, after all. I mean, that could be changed, I suppose. I think it's a neat mechanic. How about a dragon hide piercer? 
That would be terrifying. Not necessarily because it's scary, although it might very well be. But because you could lose your blessed greased plus five dragonite helm of speed.